House Republicans have set off a new firestorm on Capitol Hill today. Minnesota Democrat Elon Omar has been officially removed from the Foreign Affairs Committee after a party line vote. Republicans cited her past statements criticizing Israel. But some Democrats say it is just political revenge for the removal of Marjorie Taylor Greene and Paul Gosar from their committees during the last Congress. NBC's Ryan Nobles has more. Tonight, Democratic Congresswoman Ilhan Omar defiant. And my leadership and voice will not be diminished if I am not on this committee for one term. After Republicans took the dramatic step, voting to remove her from the Foreign Affairs Committee. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy says it's in response to Omar's past comments, which both Republicans and Democrats have condemned as anti-Semitic including saying support for Israel was, quote, all about the Benjamins baby and that Israel, quote, hypnotized the world, comments Omar has apologized for. When it comes to foreign affairs, especially the responsibility of that position around the world with the comments that you make, she shouldn't serve there. This new showdown after McCarthy kicked Democrats, Adam Schiff and Eric Swalwell, off the Intelligence Committee. Democrats call it retaliation after they stripped two Republicans from all their committees for incendiary rhetoric in the last Congress. Sign so far of an increasingly bitter divide, like this heated clash in a committee hearing this week. It's hard to take that claim seriously if, in fact, an individual who in any way supported an insurrection against the government of the United States. I'm concerned that, that you may be disqualifying too many of your own members. McCarthy argues things are better than they were in the past. How can the American people be confident that you'll be able to get things done? Because this is nothing like the last Congress where you move somebody from all committees. I've had Democrats coming up to me telling me we're running it much better. Despite what Kevin McCarthy says for the cameras, the debate before Congresswoman Omar's removal showed just how divided the House has become now. This is about keeping someone with a long record of anti-Semitic and anti-Israel bias off the Foreign Affairs Committee. This is just a bunch of racist gaslighting. We all know it. We cannot let the poisonous ideology of anti-Semitism permeate into policy decisions. Don't come here looking at us for anti-Semitism. Look in your own damn mirror before you ever come over here. Her comments have compromised the ability of the House Foreign Affairs Committee to conduct its official business. This is about targeting women of color in the, in the United States of America. Don't tell me because I didn't get a single apology Time has expired. when my life was threatened. Thank you. Can you imagine getting in these kind of fights in your place of business? Some lawmakers say the focus on infighting, investigations, and misdirected spending showdowns means this Congress is off to a really slow and really messy start. One congressman even compared the situation to a Seinfeld skit. And that is not good for a president who's hoping to make good on promises ahead of 2024, which is exactly why Republicans are doing this. Today, the Congressional Black Caucus met with President Biden and Vice President Harris about one of those very promises, police reform. They agreed to start working on a new legislative package. Last year, a bipartisan bill ended up stalled in Congress. And today, South Carolina Republican Senator Tim Scott, who worked on that very bill, tweeted this. Resurrecting the House Progressives' police reform bill is a non-starter, end quote. 